Hey, welcome back to the, to the channel. And today we're going to talk about Quay Walker. Quay Walker is number seven from the Georgia Bulldogs. He was the inside linebacker that played with N'Kobe Dean in that, in that great front front um, that Georgia had. Uh, so let's get into the film. So again, we're going we're here with Quay Walker, number seven for Georgia. But before we get started, a few housekeeping things. Is this your first time here, and you like what you see? Please hit the like button, and you want to be here for more draft videos. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified when I drop these random videos. But without further ado, let's get into it. This is Quay Walker here, number seven. And on this play, you're just gonna see his ability to scrape as a linebacker and and fill a, a open hole. Let's watch it in full speed first. Just mimicking pretty much a hole behind. And if you're here with me, you always hear me say when I talk about any linebackers, a player, a gap behind. He play, he play in a gap behind. He's back in the box right before the snap. Eyes on the running back. He's seeing the outside zone motion here. A gap behind. A gap behind. A gap behind. Now, when that running back thinks he has that huge gap to run through, seven shows up. Now, being a gap behind, this is what being a gap behind means. If he's over here, the back has the ability to bang, stick his foot in the ground and cut back. It, it, with him being a back, a gap behind, the only option that running back has is to maybe try to outrun it. And it's a lot easier for him to stay full speed and go chase him down rather than this dude to put his foot in the ground and come back. So it's harder for him to stop than try to catch that. So being a gap behind means when this guy turns up, he's there to make the tackle, which is what happens. Because he can't cut back if he wanted to because of the leverage. I mean, he let his feet go dead, but he got the guy down. So he was in great position to make a tackle, simply simply playing a gap behind. Now, whether the, whether the alignment pre-snap automatically put him there or whether he just did, he does this naturally, He's still in the right spot. Don't overrun it. Throttles down when he throttles down. Trying to shoot the hands. Get a little stiff on. We got enough cloth to bring him down. All right, next play. So here's our guy right at the line of scrimmage. Sean Blitz. Now, a big thing that I talk about when I talk about linebacker play is the ability to drop. And the fluidity of the drop. Now he's not gonna make a play on this, but I just want to see I want you to see the range he can cover, you know, with alignment and actually having another assignment. Because right now his alignment looks like he's going to blitz or he may drop, you know, straight straight down his hash. Hit the wrong thing. May drop straight down his hash. When actually he's gonna drop way back here. Now let's see how deep he actually gets. The line of scrimmage is the twenty five. He actually gets to the 15 and on the other hash, to, which matches the, this route combination. Whatever this route combination is, his drop puts him right where he needs to be. They got all this taken away. So it's a great job of him being able to open his hips. And even though he starts a little bit before the snap, he does it late enough to where this dude is really not an option because you don't know you know where the, the linebacker is going. So you can't throw it to him on the hip because he's dropping right through there. You make it throw this on a quick out. But for the most part, he take that away because of his drop and how quick he got there. So you got a, a backer, a, a backer that can can get that deep that fast. That's gonna be an asset in your um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your um, your blitz disguises, especially your your zone blitzes when you put everybody at the line and you drop different guys and bring different guys. So a guy that can do stuff like that fluidly, he can help out your, especially like the stuff Flores was doing with putting everybody in the box. And it looking like zero blitz and then dropping guys out. You got a guy that can do that with that uh, speed and with that ease of with with his hips like that. That'll help out anybody that can that that tries to do those type of things. All right, next play. Here's our guy right here, and it's gonna be a little stunt. I think I think they're gonna try to do like a little backer stunt, and he's gonna end up on the center. Watch the fight and the. The tenacity to get back in on the play. He 
He's taking the center, so the Kobe Dean can try to come off. Wrong button. So the Kobe Dean can try to come off right there. So he's taking the center going that way, and Kobe's trying to come off this way. He plays with good leverage because he has that gap, you know, sealed. Has that gap sealed. Dean comes free because of, you know, the stunt they played. Now, he spins off of Dean, but now this is our guy right here still fighting with the center. And obviously, we know the center, most centers are going to outweigh and probably be as stronger than most linebackers. For the most part, in general, centers should be stronger than linebackers. Should be. Watch how he keeps fighting to, to get off of this block. And not only does he get off of it, him and Davis gets in on tackle. This is seven right here. He's a big part of this tackle. So he fought 65 for the entire play, crossed his face, and got back in on the play. He back it up some. And this is our guy engaged right here. Still fighting. Still got good leverage got in his gap. Sees the ball. And just fights back over the top. And it, there ain't nothing special but just a guy wanting to get to the ball. That's it. There's nothing special about there's no technique. No, you know, he did this arm over slap and spin off. No, that's just wanting to get to the ball. That's all it is. Just want to. You can't coach want to. You either have it or you don't. All right, now on this last play, no, this is not the last play I got. On this play right here, I want to show you it from two different angles. This is Walker here on the edge. So apparently, you know, he can give you some edge pressure from that, you know, maybe coming outside, maybe that guy slanting inside and him coming, you know, coming wide right here, getting to the quarterback. Well, on this one, you're going to see his ability again to tackle in space. So he dropped out of there. We just talked about him being able to disguise stuff. Now this is this is an RPO by by Clemson, and I just realized this, so we're gonna go to football school a little bit. All right, this is an RPO by Clemson. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, he's blocking, he's blocking, he's going to bubble. The quarterback is eyeing seven right now. The fact that he's in a box, okay, I'm gonna fake this fake this inside zone, throw the bubble out here to this guy running the bubble. But the fact that you know right when he realizes he's not looking at him anymore. He starts to bail on him. Now you got three over three. One, two, and he's going to be directly over the guy bubbling. And he's going to have a one-on-one -on -one shot to tackle that bubble. Now, had he stayed in, had he stayed there and came, this would have been a great play for Clemson because they would have had two over three. But now with him disguising it and dropping out there at the last minute, it's three over three. It's even. This ball should have been handed off because they have a box count. Clemson has a box count. See, it's too, it's too late now. Now it's three over three. So that's a good job of disguising that and getting out of there. Now Clemson don't have numbers. He got him. He got him. And he's going to attack that. Now it's one-on-one. -on -one. No real help. You got to make that tackle. If he misses this tackle, the next guy, unless these guys get off blocks, is him. So you got to make this tackle. Shuffle, shuffles to it. Isn't just in a straight run. Now he got leverage on him. Now I talked about staying a hole behind. It's the same thing right here, but out in space. Now he can't cut back. His only option is to try to outrun him over here. And in some cases, you probably will get outran if you got a, a, a real good running back. But this does a good job of playing for leverage. There's no cutback lane. So now I just got to get him down. And luckily, you know, one of his guys came and got beat the block and helped him out. But he did a good job of playing with leverage and understanding leverage. Understand if, he, if that guy cuts it back, you know, there's no telling what he can get. Again, this is this is Walker here, and you you'll see five. How can you you Lee? How you say his name? He, he's peeking at him now. Now what it is? He should have peeked again, and he didn't, because with that silent count stuff, he knows the ball is about to come. So that's why he starts to bail now because when he lifts his leg up, he should have peeked one more time before he snapped that ball, and we'd have understand. If he hands this ball off, if he, he realizes he's out of there and he hands this ball off, look at the lane that's starting to open up for the running back. Now, 88 may win this block or whatever, but if he hands this ball off instead of throwing the bubble, look at the lane. But because 7 was good at disguising it and understanding that they were doing silent count and to, to move after the, the initial snap cadence was given, they had an advantage. Now, this is playing a gap behind. See, a gap behind. 
Now he can't cut. There's no possibility of cutback. The only way he can beat him is if he outrunning. And this is where trusting your teammates come in too. The only option you have is not running me, and I better have somebody to help on that edge. You know, 36 beat the block. And even if 36 don't beat this block, I still think Walker gets this tackle. Because he understood leverage. And, and, and played pre-snap very intelligently. And now I picked this play for my last play because we really didn't see him much in coverage in the ones I showed earlier. And he doesn't make an exceptional play here, but the fact that he's exactly where he's supposed to be you know, he don't make a play on the ball is what I want to highlight. This is this is Walker right here. He's man. He's locked on man with number two or the tight end, whoever the tight end is. Now, what I like about it is when you when you need situations with a back or a tight end, you have to take away something. And so he slow plays it enough to where this guy can't come off and run any kind of end breaking route. Like, if he runs an in breaking route, he's going to run right into him. Whether he run a, a shallow crosser, uh, a dig, or he may be passed off if he run a post. But he took away the inside route. And so now once he sticks his foot in the ground and drives out, he's going to stick his foot and drive too. Taking it away. Avoid, avoid the little peak because they're trying to rub him. Avoid that perfectly. And what I do like about it is he's not peeking in the backfield. His man, his eyes is on his man. He just doesn't completely close it out. But you, a lot of times at this point, you have guys to turn and look in there. And this guy will do that and it turns into six points. But look at his eyes. Locked in on his guy. Locked in. And once he plays on the ball, he tries to get it. But the Florida guy does a good job of lay hands too. But now once he gets it, you get him down. So he understands man coverage, understands leverage. And we talked about in the run game, he understands leverage. So that translates in the passing game also. Uh, very interesting prospect. Um, not going to say he's the best linebacker in in, in the draft, but uh, he uh, he's not even the best linebacker on his team. That's Nicobe. But I really think he's going to be a very good prospect. And, again, I've said this, you know, even talking about all these Georgia kids, 44 is going to get drafted high. 95 is going to get drafted high. 99 is going to get drafted high. 17 is going to get drafted high. This is, are these front five, these guys that are on the screen right here? And I'm, and I'm going to say this in the sound bad, but it's not. He's the worst out of these five. But, worst in the context are these guys are so good. So, I'm not saying like he's a bad player. He's the. Let me so exclude worse. He's the fifth best player in this screenshot right here. That's what I'm saying. And he, I think he's going to go to a team where he does not have to be the guy and end up being a pretty darn good football player, starting off on special teams and working his way to be a weak linebacker somewhere, especially because you can put him on the line. He can do blitz stuff too. Did a great job with the stunt early in the film. Uh, played very well off Nicobe Dean. So if he can get there with a linebacker that's established, or a guy that's establishing himself, he's going to be a good Batman to somebody that's robbing at the linebacker position. And so um, I'll put him on my big board, and we'll see where he's at You know, once I get a bunch of more guys up there. But um, I appreciate you guys for coming through. Um, I took a couple of days off. But, you know, you need it. You don't want to have burnout. But uh, everybody that supports the Patreon, the um, do the Super Chats on, on YouTube, supports PayPal, and... Um, and the uh, cash out. Everybody that does that, I appreciate you guys, man. Uh, more videos will be coming out soon. I think this is the bulk of the Georgia guys. I, I think I'm going to do pickings. But I don't know. I'm going to save pickings when I get in the receivers. Because y'all know how much I like receivers. So um, now I'm going to start trying to do the, the some other top guys that are not with Georgia or Alabama. You know, because I had those films first. So um, drop comments in the, in the, drop suggestions in the comment section about who you think I should do. Especially if they're a highly rated guy, first round guy. And um, we're going to, you know, try to pump them out, man. Again, I appreciate you guys for coming through. Like, comment, subscribe, share. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. I appreciate you guys. Peace.